Welcome to the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay. This is your positive path for spiritual living. Johnny! Johnny, wake up! It's time to go to church. Yeah, Mom, I don't want to go to church. Why would you not want to go to church? Well, to begin with, it's boring. The people there, they don't like me. And church is just not my thing anymore. Johnny, get up. We're all in the other room, and we're waiting to have breakfast. We're going to church whether you like it or not. Let me give you three really good reasons why you need to go to church. First of all, it is your duty. Secondly... You're 50 years old. (laughs) And finally, you're the pastor of the church. (laughs) So this morning, I want to say to you, wake up, wake up, wake up, my friends. Wake up to the recognition and the realization of who you are. So much more than anything you've ever been able to imagine. You are are created in the image and the likeness of God. And this morning is a wonderful morning for you to awaken to that identity of yourself and to realize where you live right now in this moment, not at some distant point in the future, but right now you are living, existing, living, breathing in the kingdom of God. To help us in our experience of waking up this morning, I'm going to share with you from the pages of a great book by a man named Anthony DeMello. He was an Indian Jesuit priest, and he wrote this book called Awareness, The Perils and Opportunities of Reality. I've always loved Anthony DeMello, partially because he was a rebel of his time, and a lot of what he says is outspoken, direct, and sometimes not easy to digest. But I have found that every word that he speaks is helpful to me in my own journey. And I hope it's helpful to you as well. If you find this morning's message intriguing, please consider joining me for four weeks beginning tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the Cameron House. We are going to begin a mystical minds adventure through the pages of this book. It's a wonderful opportunity to come together and build community, bring a dish to share, very informal conversation, open discussion on the pages of Awareness by Anthony DeMello. Charles Fillmore, who was the co-founder of the Unity Movement more than 125 years ago with his wife Myrtle, said this, spiritual awakening is becoming aware of the things of spirit, of God. Now, for most of us, we live our days quite aware of the things of materiality. We're quite aware, in fact, many of us are mesmerized by the reports of our five senses and what they tell us about life, what they tell us about what's happening, the experiences of our lives. And what I believe Charles Fillmore is trying to tell us is that as we begin to grow and mature spiritually, we realize there's another dimension to this. There is more than that which the five senses are reporting to us. There is a spiritual dimension to life. And we begin to refrain from placing all of our attention on the material experience and start to desire more and more the spiritual experience of daily living. Most of you know, if you know me very well, and you've heard me say it from this platform many times, that I'm a really early riser on Sunday mornings, like I was this morning. Because I like to already have my day in motion by the time I get here. I don't want to just be waking up, rubbing my eyes, and coming and broadcasting this truth to you. But a number of months ago, such was not the case. I woke up, looked at the alarm clock, and realized it was 8.30. I'm supposed to be here at 8 o'clock, and I'm supposed to have a service at 9 o'clock. So you can only imagine what went on inside of me. I was nervous. I was concerned. Oh, my God. I've got This is my worst dream, right? My worst nightmare. So I run to my closet, forgetting about shaving, taking a shower, anything. Just run to the closet, and you won't believe this, but during the middle of the night, someone had come into my apartment and stolen every item of clothing that I own. My shoes, my jackets, my coats, my shirts, they were all gone. 
And so in desperation, I threw on my bathrobe, put a hat over my head, and put on sunglasses and tried to sneak over here to Unity on the Bay incognito so that no one would know who I was. I went to Eddie, our board president, to try to get him to get me some clothes so that I could be properly attired for the experience, but it wasn't working. All of a sudden, Anthony over here on the keyboard says, listen, Reverend Chris, he says, Dale's not here this morning, and you're going to have to conduct the choir. So here I am standing there in my bathrobe with a crazy hat on, sunglasses, barefoot, and I have to conduct the choir? It's not looking good. Then I come into the room here, and I see there's absolutely nobody sitting in the seats, except in a flash, suddenly the room is filled with all manner of the most bizarre clowns. And they're all just laughing at me. Oh, ha, 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 ha. And I was totally out of control. How many of you have ever had a dream, or I will even say it was a nightmare, that seemed so real you could swear that it had happened? Been there? It was so real. In fact, even when I finally did arrive on time, properly dressed for the 9 o'clock service, I was still shaking a little bit. And the first thing I did was make sure Dale was here. (laughs) Because it was just so real. You see, what I had to do was wake up, and the moment that I woke up, I could see it was 4 o'clock in the morning. I had all the time that I needed. Absolutely nothing was wrong, and there was no cause for fear or concern whatsoever. I'm telling you this morning, my friends, there's no cause for fear or concern, no matter how insane your life seems to be unfolding. Whether the room is filled with wonderful people like it is right now or whether your life is filled with insane clowns that seem to be laughing at you and it seems to you as though you're completely out of control, all, all is well here and now. Anthony DeMello says in the pages of the book Awareness, though everything is a mess, all is well. Though everything is a mess, All is well. How can that be? Well, let me share with you a new definition for the word mess. I consider a mess to be a material experience that surpasses spiritual. Material experience surpassing spiritual. In other words, we've become so preoccupied, you and I, with the material realm that we really believe that's all there is. We've become so preoccupied and invested in the nightmare that we forget in the ultimate sense it is not real. Thus the paradox can be explained that even in the midst of the biggest mess you could possibly imagine, all is well here and now. And the more that you awaken to that, the more it will be reflected in your day-to-day experience. In the book of Ephesians, we read these words. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Now, a lot of you realize in unity, we interpret the Holy Scriptures metaphysically. That is, we seek to look beyond the literal understanding of what's being said in the story to the spiritual significance of it, and then be able to apply that universal significance and spirituality into our day-to-day experience, our day-to-day lives. So when we think of darkness metaphysically, what we think of is unconsciousness. We think of those pockets within us that are not aware, they are not awake. And we're told in this scripture that when we turn our attention to the Christ, the Christ being the divine identity, the divine pattern that stands behind all that you are, when you put your focus on that, you begin to realize it brings you light. It begins to wake you up. Arise and awake, O sleeper. And I do believe if you look out into the world right now, you can see a pretty big mess. That is a material situation that seems to have overcome the spiritual reality or nature that is our true right, our birthright, as sons and daughters of the Most High, of God. So I believe that it's a wonderful time for you and I to hear the alarms, you see. The louder this becomes out here, 
That's your own alarm clock. It's saying, wake up, wake up, realize that all is well. Do not become enamored or hypnotized by the experience that is taking place out here. That experience is taking place to shake you and wake you into spiritual recognition and realization. This really changes the way you look at the obstacles and the challenges that you face personally and that we face as a human family on our planet right now because you realize they are the wake-up calls. They are the ones that are knocking at our door saying, it's time to get up, it's time to remember, it's time to understand yourself from a different and new perspective. So how many of you are ready this morning? I know you think you already woke up. But to really wake up. How many of you are ready to wake up, to put the spiritual ahead of the material and to make it the priority in your life? Thrilled to see so many hands, my friends, because you know what? It's only those raised hands that's going to change this world right now. It's only those raised hands that's going to change the reality in our city, in our family, in our country, and on this planet We have to make the decision to raise the priority of spiritual awakening and make it a greater priority than the the physical preoccupation we have with materiality. And I'm going to share with you this morning four different ways that have been given to us by Anthony DeMello in the pages of this book, Awareness. It starts with a word, observe. Observe. And what this means is that we start to watch the activities and the events in our lives as though we were engaged in a movie. A certain level of detachment is required for this. You start to watch the drama of your life as if it was unfolding through someone else, through a character in a film or a character on a stage. You bring this objectivity into your experience, and then you ask yourself a very important question that in times of trouble is not an easy question to ask. It's this. What does this tell me about myself? Now, you see, when life happens, which it's constantly doing out here, we tend to become very outer-directed. We're looking for the people, the circumstances out here to either admit that they um, have brought misfortune into our life or try to hold them accountable or blame them in some way. Instead of saying, this situation, whatever it might be happening in your life right now today, this situation was created by you out of your spiritual genius as an alarm clock. It's trying to wake you up. It's knocking at the door of your existence. If you become completely out of directed, you miss that totally. But if you can take it within, what is this telling me about myself? When I reacted the way I did to that person, what is that telling me about myself? When I see the situations happening in the world outside of me, what are they telling me about me? You see, now you're getting into the ground of being wherein, my friends, you are capable of making a change. So long as it's all out of directed, there's nothing you can do about it. How many of you have tried to change another person? Come on. Come on. How many of you are trying to change another person in this room this morning? Yeah, you know. How well did that work? But I'm telling you right now, you can change yourself. And as you change yourself, you change your experience. As you change yourself, you change your world. I love this statement from A Course in Miracles, one of my favorite spiritual texts, as you know. It says this, the world you see does nothing. It has no effects at all. Hear this. The world you see from day to day, it has no effects whatsoever. It merely represents your thoughts. This world is a screen upon which is being projected your own thought system, your own belief system, and it will change entirely as you elect to change your mind. Change your mind, change your world. Change your mind, change the cast of characters in your experience from day to day. It's all happening up here. Please hear me on this. It's happening in you. This world is an outer projection of an inward dynamic. And once you realize that, you ask that question, what is it that I can learn about myself? Everything that's happening to you, my friends, is an opportunity, a God-given opportunity for you to discover some hidden aspect of yourself that is now being called into the forefront of your awareness so that you can recognize it, make a different choice, and in making a different choice, begin to make a different world. Next, 
<laughs> this is not one that I always excel at. You know, I can be honest with you all. Own your experience. You have created your experience. And until you own it, you will not be able to change it. So own your experience. Anthony DeMello says this. Suffering points up an area in you where you need to be transformed and changed. If there's any level of suffering going on in your personal experience this morning, I'm telling you, that's your alarm clock that's trying to get your attention. When you put these two together and you say, what is this upset telling me about myself? You have the key to personal freedom in this life experience. DeMello says this, first of all, identify the negative feelings within you. In unity, this is sometimes difficult for us to do because we're very positively oriented. So it can be very challenging for us at times to look carefully at our own negative emotions, reactions, whatever it might be. Understand that this negativity is existing within you. The negative feeling is within you. It's not out here. It dwells within you. Don't see it as part of your essential self. In other words, your essential self is your Christ itself, your God self. There is another identity that we've accepted, most of us, for ourselves that is based on erroneous thinking and based on lack and limitation. That's where the negativity is housed. It is not in your essential self. So you declare, as the scripture that we just reviewed informs us, you declare that you're identifying with the Christ. You're going to bring light to this situation and liberate yourself, free yourself. And then understand again that as you change, as you change, everything else changes. You are the projector and you have the freedom to change your experience by changing your mind. Next, understand. Understand. Don't renounce. Don't push your experience away. And don't judge your experience. And even as you begin to become aware of what's going on, don't judge yourself for having misinterpreted the reality of your existence. A number of years ago, we were blessed by a great speaker and a great author who put together a series of books called Conversations with God. His name was Neil Donald Walsh. And I had one of the most powerful epiphanies that night as he was speaking. I had never heard it put this way before. He said, understanding replaces forgiveness in the mind of the master. Understanding replaces forgiveness in the mind of the master. Think about somebody who you feel has wronged you. And take just a moment, instead of becoming defensive which sets you up then to have to be in a process of forgiveness, consider what would happen if you could understand that person, understand their background, the experiences that led them to act toward you the way that they did. My friends, I guarantee you, if you open yourself to understanding other people, most especially your adversaries, you will no longer need to forgive them because you will get it. And you will get that you, too, have taken actions in your life that you might not be proud of or happy with. But they were the best actions you could take. Understand the background. Understand the perspective from which these enemies might be coming. And when you offer that understanding, you take the first step toward reconciliation. And you begin to realize these individuals are not your foes at all. They are, in fact, your great friends. Your great friends. And finally, watch your conditioning. All of us come into life, you know, with a certain process of conditioning, and they're all a little bit different. I will share with you a story of a couple weeks ago when, you might recall, I was on vacation, and um, I had a beautiful weekend as a part of that time off, a beautiful weekend with my former wife of 18 years who flew down to South Florida to spend some time with me for the first time in seven years it had been. And it was a beautiful and very revelatory weekend for moi. <laughs> it began with she and I on a Saturday morning going over to see my mom at Miami Jewish at the nursing home there. And it was truly one of the most powerful and emotional experiences I've ever had because my mother and my former wife were very close. And my former wife, Karen, she had worked with elderly. She knew what she was doing in a way that I just don't. So she knew how to go over, not just 
hold her, but literally pick her up and, and put her on her lap practically. And my mother was so grateful to see her, and the chemistry between the two of them was so touching. It was like this sacred and holy reunion. I was crying. I wanted to take a picture, and I thought the moment is just too holy to even allow a photograph. But it was such a blessing, and I was so high, and I was walking out of Miami Jewish on this just emotional state of bliss, and all of a sudden my former turns to me and says, you know, I think we ought to take A1A to Hollywood. (laughs) Because we have a reservation for this place uh, on the beach to spend the weekend. And in my mind, now understand I didn't say any of this, okay? But in my mind I thought, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Why would anybody take A1A to Hollywood, Florida to spend a weekend on the beach when you can take 95 and be there in 15 minutes? It it doesn't make any sense. She said, you know, I haven't taken that route since like 30 years ago when I lived in Palm Beach and I would come down to Miami and it was so beautiful and soothing. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, honey, that was 30 years ago. Now you're not going to see a single square foot of ocean. It's all high rises. And I just... And it'll take four times all this internal dialogue, but I'm just thinking, hold on, Christopher, just hold on. And I said to her, all right, let's take A1A. Here, you drive. (laughs) Now, I have to tell you what happened here, because it's funny. It's funny, and it's also kind of sad. It was for me anyway, because I realized in that moment that for 18 years being married to this woman, over and over and over again, I had discounted her ideas, her thoughts. They didn't seem practical to me. They didn't seem logical. Why would anybody want to take A1A? You know what? It doesn't matter why somebody wants to take A1A. They want to take A1A, and her idea and all of her ideas are just as good as mine. They might be born out of a different perspective or conditioning, but they're still valid. Friends, you have no idea what a revelation this was for me. I remember 25, 30 years ago, whenever it was, when we were going to therapy, and after the first therapy appointment, the therapist says to me, Um, You might want to stay behind. Let your wife go on out. And he says says to me, you know, I got to tell you, I think you're as much and probably more responsible for the current predicament of this relationship than she is. Of course, he had to be wrong. (laughs) Clearly, my ideas were better. Clearly, my perspective was better than hers. So this was huge, my friends. Really stay in touch with the internal dialogue when you think other people are offering ideas that don't make sense to you. Let them in. We're here to impact each other, not judge each other. And I think of all the times when I discounted her opinions, no wonder she wanted out of that marriage so badly. But I couldn't see it. I was completely blind because I was ignorant. So we must open our eyes and allow ourselves to respect the perspectives. Don't you see that that's what's going on on the planet right now? We have this much respect for each other's positions and perspectives. We think we are better. We think we are right. Let me tell you what we are in that situation is blind. So you want to wake up? Start. Start giving some credit to the opinions of other people, whether you agree with them or not. So here's a nutshell. Observe. Own your experience. Understand. Watch your own conditioning. And together, my friends, I tell you, we are the ones. No one else on this planet has the information available to them that we do. A few do. But in this room, we can make the difference. We have what it takes to awaken and to liberate ourselves from a nightmare of insane clowns into a spiritual reality of total and complete bliss. God bless you. Thank you. Well, as I tie my shoe here, I want to say what? 
You were nervous all the time because you were watching me. I knew that it was undone. I just wasn't going to interrupt my flow and try to tie it up. But anyway, we're all human, right? And we're also divine. This is the time when we give you the opportunity to give back for what you've received, you know, the priceless nature of these teachings that we're exposed to, this wonderful music, this home, this spiritual home, now in Miami for 90 years, 1927 to 2017, that you have made this possible. We don't have a lot of benefactors or we're not part of a hierarchy of religion, uh, a religious hierarchy that supports this church. You are the benefactors of this church. We're here because of your financial investment. We're here because of your time and the talent that you contribute as sacred servers. You make this place possible. So I really encourage you to give from the generosity of your heart as our ushers come forward. And we take another moment to remind ourselves that we have the power to bless. So we are going to bless this gift, just taking a moment to infuse it with our love, with our light, with our appreciation for being in this sacred room this morning. And I invite you to join me as we affirm our offertory statement together. Divine love that I am blesses all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you, God. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay, a spiritual community located in Miami, Florida. Unity on the Bay is supported by the generosity of its community. If you'd like to make a donation or learn more about Unity on the Bay, please visit unityonthebay.org. You can also follow Unity on the Bay on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for even more positive spiritual inspiration. Until next time, thanks for listening and many blessings. Namaste.